Hey, what's up guys? Starting with the spray gunners here and today in this video we're going to learn how to deal with that. Uh, if you happen to be a situation like me, I accidentally, completely by accident, get your airbrush all dirty and uh, all you know, dry paint. Look at this, like it's a complete mess. And again, happened by accident, so we're going to look what we can do with that to fix it. Get it back to new condition, or almost new, we'll see. First of all, let's strip it. Oops. It's mine. Yeah. You know, it's mine. Yeah, you like it? I love it. Is it your favorite now? It's my favorite. What do you think about it? Are you crazy? I might have time for it's like Saturday. You don't really need it, right? It's Saturday, yeah, do you? No. I, <laughs> no. Okay, not anymore, right? So no, let's, not anymore. let's have, yeah, yeah. take it here for a couple of days. Maybe and take, and maybe you take the one. Come no? back to it, right? And that's how, by the magic of editing, we get the clean and restored airbrush back in my table. Well, of course, this video is not about magic. Pre-bedded this stuff, my editor is much, much more proficient than that. We're going to be talking about this. This is the 4008 Restorer by Cretex Colors. According to what says on the back here, and yes, I read those sometimes, it says it's going to work on the cleans dried, hard to clean water-based paints. Um, I would say yes, and also since I'm curious, I tested it on the 2K solemn based. 2K mostly like you know translates as very fucking hard to remove. It did clean it also. So this thing, and here we have to be careful with it, melts plastic, some of them, because you know it comes in plastic bottles, so obviously not all, all of them, but like you know, cheaper re reusable uh, disposable, so not reusable disposable uh, glasses and stuff like that. Forget about it, it's gonna melt it. Uh, you need something, either root glass or metal to work with it, or you know, something similar as this, whatever they use for that. It's an awesome product for dried paint, as I mentioned already, and of course it can happen by accident, as with me and with one of the dramatic, I'll say, for the camera, of course, um, ways to cover a brush full in paint. Most likely it's not gonna happen with you. Most likely what's gonna happen in your case is you either forget you know, the airbrush for the night, I need to run the way of something or it just you know been used for so many years and uh, it's not performing as well so you might have all this dried paint spots in your airbrush so it times to uh, time to restore it and that exactly what you need this is the solution for it make sure you use gloves make sure you are in the vented area and don't spray it so i think this is, might be one of the products uh, by critics that not made for only one problem not made for spraying um, you don't spray it, you soak stuff in it, okay? You can use it just for cleaning, um, meaning just, you know, put on a brush and try to clean as I did with the air valve, I'll show later, so not to dissolve all the all the rubber here, because also rubber is going to be dissolved by it. Start by wearing gloves, start by getting your, uh, you know, space ready where we're going to clean, uh, with glass or metal or uh, this on the, you know, the right grade of uh, plastic. In my particular case here, which is again more dramatic when, than normally you would probably have, I would soak this whole airbrush except probably for air valve and this, uh, the, the, the rear piece because they have rubber seals. There are also two rubber seals inside by the trigger and by the head uh, part. Um, in my case, honestly, I would probably hope they're not going to be uh, in trouble, which they likely will and I'll have to replace them, but in a condition airbrush like that, that's just the way to go. But still, since I'm trying to show you how to approach in your case, which hopefully is not as bad, um, you do want to take apart the airbrush and not soak anything that has rubber seals on it. A lot of airbrushes still use those and there's no way around it, so it's not like really something that's going to go away soon, I feel like. Um, but try to remove air valve for sure. You don't want to soak this. And if you have any other like a handle, sometimes have the rubber uh, ring on it and other parts. You do not want to soak those because you're going to get rid of those. Uh, they're going to dissolve, they're going to like swallow and become really big and uh, not useful in airbrush anymore. Anything metal can go straight into this bath and I would say 10 minutes minimum. That's actually according to their, uh, to their um, manual here. I gave it 20 minutes, so I started with a 10 and you can see me using uh, just a Q-tip. I, I, of course, it's not the most performance, uh, you know, high performance way to remove it, most efficient. Um, I'm just doing it for the sake of video, just to show how easy the paint comes up, even with the Q-tip. Um, grab the, you know, stronger brush on the rear side of the airbrush when I had contact with the paper, 
it creates some kind of additional bond there and uh, it's not cleaning as, as, as easily so I had to soak it again and spend a little more time cleaning this off but the paint itself it just falls out everywhere creates like small it, it falls into small uh, like flakes uh, soft chunks of, of the paint we just make sure you clean them from everywhere um, useful tools of course we have a bunch of different uh, cleaning tools we have the sets from Iwata we have the non-name set we have the other brand sets your hardware steam has a really good uh, cleaning kit there any cleaning tools brushes q-tips uh, toothpicks anything related like this small things try to avoid sharp metal like even they have uh, this little cleaning brushes they have sometimes the sharp uh, sharp corners on on the on the tip try to avoid scratching airbrush with it you want to use something plastic you want to use something soft you want to use maybe like the hairbrush uh, with actual uh, you know, the square hair or something like that you can use things like that definitely again some of them might melt so be careful with that if you have a brush which in plastic and or in glue it's likely to fall apart because this thing is pretty good. It is uh, what it says here again on label, it's biodegradable and water, so water soluble cleaner, which means it's pretty healthy for our planet, so it shouldn't be too bad. And it doesn't, it's not toxic, but it doesn't mean you have to drink it or you know you want it in your body. So again, protection is number one. I would uh, definitely suggest even use those little uh, protective uh, goggles, maybe a respirator if you're really concerned about that. Here I even found the right uh, wording for it, dissolve low density plastics. So I guess you need high density plastic. You probably know what it is, I have no clue. But yeah, um, keep away from more rings, stencils, rubber. Actually pretty smart critics to put it here. Exactly what I was talking about, but I learned it, um, you know, I'm not always reading stuff. Learning the hard way. Back to our cleaning. So. You do want to make a bath, you do want to give it time, and then you just clean it with whatever uh, good tools to clean it off. And rub all this uh, paint off, uh, get it out of the small niches. I recommend using this uh, cool blower, they call called air blower, uh, by uh, Harden Stenbeck. What it is, is pretty much a flexible needle on the end, allows you to get into all these little uh, niches here and there, and uh, just you know use the air pressure to blow it out. And that's exactly why you probably want to use the pair of protective goggles make sure you don't get into your face and try not to breathe it as well but other than that it's a pretty straightforward process depending on the particular model of airbrush you have it can be more complicated can be easier than what i had actually this is one of the most uh, complicated airbrushes because it's micro you know with so, so many details in it and uh, so much precision and everything so how to uh hard to deal with the cleaning sometimes like that but you know i did it on purpose i took airbrush from Nestor, one of his favorite ones, and I just, you know, put it in the paint to make sure you understand that this is okay. It happens, and it doesn't mean you have to throw away your airbrush, because we do have our saver here. It's 4008 by Kratex. It's available spray gunner in all different sizes, and by the way, you don't have to uh, use the full bottle for cleaning just one airbrush. If you saw, I made this bath, you know, and I pretty much uh, used two-thirds, I think, of the bottle there um, to soak it in. This is reusable, so the stuff is still active, it still works, it doesn't really have the shelf life. So what I did is pretty much I put it back into the bottle here. I, I had the empty bottle, so I put it into, uh, actually I had remaining, put it back in one of the empty bottle I had, and saved all this dirty stuff. Um, filter it, if you can use you know, what the paint filter, um, make sure that all the big stuff is out of there. I also gave it like 20-25 minutes to sit to make sure all the bigger pieces are settled down on the bottom and I just carefully for the rest it's still pretty dirty color I just didn't want to waste the time I think if I would give it like 24 hours to stand it would be even cleaner just nicely kind of and gently pour it back to the bottle because yeah it settles actually I still can see larger chunks right there on the bottom so more time you give Pretty sure tomorrow is going to be pretty clean actually uh, but again you can save it so you used it for cleaning and there's no problem to reuse it for another uh, dirty airbrush down the road um totally works so for spray guns as well if you have dirty, you know, dirty spray gun with dry paint in it again i'm not sure which particular solvents they're going to work with but i was curious and in my case it worked on the 2k uh primer that's uh that, that's cleanser too so pretty sure depends on the paint you have it might help you with your solvents as well so have to just you know do the test panel as they say anyways i hope it was helpful that's it for today thanks for tuning in and see you in the next one